How can I love God? It's been 20 years, but it seems like yesterday that I was asking that question. 1917 was a turbulent time for America, and yet it was the summer I discovered one of life's greatest secrets. It was the year my brother Walter went off to fight in the Great War, and while our boys fought in France, I was struggling with a conflict of my own. I did not know it then, but God had already prepared the answer to my struggle 800 years ago in the life of Rabbi Meir ben Isaac Nehorai. Rabbi Meir loved God and lived in Worms, Germany at the time of the First Crusade. While some men drew their swords and made war, he dipped his pen in ink and wrote a song of rare beauty. Rabbi! Come in. Rabbi! Good morning. Is something wrong? Bishop Adelbert thinks you're in danger. He said that before. No one will harm us. The bishop offers you his protection. Give the bishop my thanks. The boys will be here soon. If we have need of him, we will notify you. It is the year of our Lord, 1096. Pope Urban II calls for a crusade to protect Jerusalem and the churches of the East from the Muslim Turks. William the Carpenter deviously counsels Count Emiko to start a crusade of his own. My lord, are we riding? Yes. Send word to my men. Raise the villagers. We will ride. Not for the Pope, but for Emiko. Using the excitement of the times, Count Emiko rallies renegades and mobs to attack the Jews in neighboring villages, destroying some of the very people the Pope wants to protect. God wills it. God wills it. We desire to combat the enemies of God in the East. <laughs> to God than any other. He has been patient thus far, but no longer. He will bring wrath, destruction, and vengeance to those who are beyond mercy. In 1917, I was 10 years old, and there were nine of us children in the Lehman family. Claudia was already married, Walter lived in Chicago, and our Oma Frederica lived with us. I had never heard of the rabbi or Count Amico. I had also never experienced a real war. What's he doing? Uh, Papa, he's praying. But why is he walking and praying like that? Out here? Well, he is a preacher. Hmm. Agar! You know why they move in over there? They've lost all their money, so Mom Ellie lets them live there. All those people lost all their money? There's this one man. He's crazy. Sometimes at night he roams the streets. They say he's even killed a man. Think we can see him? Don't let Mama Ellie see you. She'll try to make you weed a flower bed or bring a letter to the post office or something. Now I need that meat for supper and I have no way of getting it. Boys! I need somebody to Blynn is 
that you? Hey, Fern. Can you read this for me? Where'd you get this? It belongs to Oma Frederica. It's all in German. I'm not good at German. It's a prayer book. I'll go get the twins. Oh, there you are. It's time to eat. Yeah, so Gail showed me the plans for the observatory today. It's going to be a hundred inch telescope. A hundred inch. Well, Molly, how was your visit to Friday's house? Oh, it was good. Um, and she showed me a whole bunch of new recipes that I'd like to try. Did you get some? Oh, and Papa, Professor Hale found a job for me. I can work, and they have a microscope. Oh, no, not yet. Here you go. How are you, buddy? Good. Hello, Pauline. Eva. So, Walter, what brings you all the way from Chicago? Well, hey, come here. You remember when I wrote about having to fill out the draft registration? You've been drafted? You can't fight in a war against Germany. I've been drafted. You can't fight against Germany. We have relatives over there. You've got to fight. We're not going to the boarding house. Um, I mean, you got to fight. Uh, we're Americans. We're, we're not Huns. Huns? Blin, what are you talking about? That's what some people call the German soldiers, Papa. I know, Theodore, but what are you talking about, Blin? Who ever said anything about us not being Americans? Mark said we were a bunch of Huns because we wouldn't fight. Blin. It is true that our family comes from Germany, and we prefer not to fight in a war. What was it that you said when you registered for the draft? Well, I told them that I had relatives in Germany and that I did not like to fight. Right. As a family, we will stand in the love of God no matter what people around us say. Now, this is Walter's decision to make. Whatever he decides, we will stand with him in it. Thank you, Father. But first, I need to call a family council about our financial situation. Here, Papa. Thank you. Are we all here? Good. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are our source. We love you and desire to please you. Help us now as we discuss our family financial situation. Amen. The church can no longer support a full-time pastor, and I've been forced to take a significant pay cut. And we've been praying that God would provide for us. And eventually, I want to start publishing a paper. But until then, we will need income to keep the house. I spoke with Mr. Powell today at the packing plant. And uh, I will begin working there tomorrow. And I could start the job Professor Hale found for me. It's in a lab. Well, not really. It's in the pharmacy, but he has a microscope. Yes, Theodore, you could. But I also want you to prepare for college. I do not want our need to bring fear into our lives. This is an opportunity for our faith to grow. I want us to learn to see every hardship as an opportunity. Now, we will all need to work together. Theodore will look into getting a job. Pauline is already doing a good job saving us money in the kitchen. Some of us will earn money. Some of us will save money. But we must all do our part. Thank you all for coming to this meeting. As you know, our family is in a crisis. We are experiencing a financial... financial apparatus at this time. Donald, what are you doing here? I want to be part of the council, too. You're too little. You can't read. Just go away. I am not too little. Yes, you are. 
can't read either. Glenn, let him be in the meeting. He can help. All right. You can be in the meeting. Go over there. Last night at the family council... Shouldn't we pray first? Papa always prays. Yeah, we should pray. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a source. Please help us now as we discuss our family financial situation. Uh, amen. Um, last night at the family council, we heard about the financial need. Theodore's working. Pauline saves money. What can we do? We could sell Liberty Bonds. That's what President Wilson does when he needs money. Donald, that, that, people won't even buy them. Papa bought one. Only the President or, or Congress or, or somebody like that can issue Liberty Bonds. Sometimes the ladies at church make quilts to raise money for the heathen. We could make quilts to raise money for us. We don't know how to make quilts. We could ask Oma to help. She's made lots of quilts. Oma, can you help us make quilts? We need to sell them to make money. Well, if I make the quilts, then I should get the money. You need to find something you can make. Yeah. We need to find something we can do. Fern, can you help Pauline in the kitchen? Donald, Wilma, you need to come work on your scripture verses for Sunday school. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with Wilma, what time is next? Oma? Yes, Blynn. Why does Papa walk in the woods and pray? Papa is spending time with God. You know how Eva and James take long walks together? Do I ever? That's the way they communicate. So that's why Papa walks. Do you ever do it? I read my Bible and I say my prayers. That's how I spend time with God. Thanks. You're welcome. I hadn't considered it from this angle before. I'd always thought of it as a religious objection. But we've got cousins over there. From a strictly logical viewpoint, I believe the Kaiser is wrong. Hmm. What I don't know is if it's my responsibility to stop him. Hello, sir. Is Benny here today? He sure is. Benny! Yes, sir? Benny, this is Mr. Layman's son, Walter. Hey. Hello, Benny. It's nice to meet How you. How did he know about nice Walter? Nice to meet you as well. Hey, Mama. Oh, hi, Walter. Would you boys pass this corn for me? Sure. <laughs> so, are you thinking about going? Yes, I've been drafted, but you volunteered. How do you see this war? It was a hard decision. It's hard to know. I'm gonna take the children on home. Okay, Blynn. <laughs> Let's go. You are a man of God. Thank you, Papa. Hey, Blynn. Hey. Been fighting? Yeah, with Eddie. Come here for a minute. I want to talk to you. Well, I'll be leaving pretty soon. You're going to the Great War. Yes, I am. And with Theodore working, you're the oldest son at home now. Think you can watch out for your sisters and Donald for me? Yes, I'll, I'll try. Walter, are you excited about going? Blynn, when this all came up, I didn't think I could go. War is not, well, it's not a nice thing. It can get pretty bad. So why are you going? Because Germany, the Kaiser, broke his promise to Belgium, and he's been killing a lot of people over there. If he isn't stopped, he's going to go on killing. Families, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters. I'm going to help make peace. So do you want to go? Well, I've been drafted, which means I have to go. But I've prayed about it, and I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Walter? Yeah? 
What are you thinking, Blynn? What if... What if something happens, you know, over there? I've thought about that. I want to love my neighbor as myself. And even though they live so far away, they're still my neighbors. If duty calls me to lay down my life for them, well, I'm ready to do that. Blynn, this is one thing I can do to demonstrate my love for God. Here, I want to give you something. Your prism? Yeah. It's taught me a lot about God's love. I want you to have it. The secret of the prism will help you watch out for the others. All right, bud? A secret? Yes, sir -y. Do you think you can figure it out? I'll try. Thanks, Walter. You're welcome. Come on inside. Sir, that is the last stronghold on this front. If we capture that position, we get the entire sector. Spread out. Give me cover. Go on in. going to the Great War? Well, you see, Donald, somebody has to put the Kaiser on his place. Or because he loves God. Bye. Goodbye, Oma. Bye, Walter. <laughs> Goodbye, Donald. Papa? Be strong. I will. Bye, Mama. Bye, son. Bye, Fern. Blynn? I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. Bye, Wilma. Goodbye. I'll take that. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Be strong. Walter is doing his part by fighting the war. We need to do our part. How can we make money? Donna and I get a penny for Mrs. Bundy if we have a verse memorized. I like to buy a gumball with it, but I could give that up. I don't want to give up my gumball. Donald, this is more important than a gumball. Do you want to live in the boarding house? But I like gumballs. No, no, no. We need more than gumball money. We need something big. I have a quarter that Walter gave me for Christmas. I could give that. A quarter? That's big. I'm talking about lots of money. More than a penny? Even more than a dollar? More than ten dollars? Maybe even more than a hundred dollars. Lynn, Papa wants to speak with you. Yes, ma'am. He's in the family room. I'm coming. Uh, yes, Papa? Lynn. Mr. Powell said that you can work with me on days that we're loading the rail cars for shipment. You mean, like, like a real job? Yes, like a real job. 
You can start with me on Thursday. Yes, sir. Hey boy, is it really that heavy? May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. You are dismissed. You better be careful, you'll end up in the poorhouse. Not me. When, maybe. Say what? Not talking about the game. Your papa, he hasn't been preaching full time anymore. Heard he had to get a job. Tonight the young fellow is preaching. The way I heard it, your family is struggling financially. We are not, we're doing just fine. Well, that's the way I heard it. You can't think you're so smart. Let's just back off. The Lehman family's doing just fine. I'm, I was, take it back. Well, that's the way I heard it. You don't have to repeat everything you hear. So I'm, take it back. I was just take boys. it. Blan, um, Papa is ready to go. Papa, are we? Are we? Yes, Blan. I mean, is our family really struggling financially? I mean, why is James preaching tonight if the church doesn't have enough money to pay? James is preaching tonight. I have asked him because he is called by God, and this is an excellent opportunity for him to get experience. But why did Mark say... It is true that our church is struggling some with finances. Our whole nation is struggling with the Great War. I am doing my part by working at the packing plant. James is doing his part by preaching tonight. And you must all do your part by not letting what other people say disturb you. In that moment, when we realize that it's not just any shepherd who is picking his way through the briars in the twilight to come to our rescue, it is the High King of Heaven who is our shepherd. All we like sheep had gone astray, but God, the same God who put the stars in their courses, the same God who created the heavens and the earth, that same God is the God who loves us and who came to our rescue. What you writing? I'm working on a song. Hey, did you hear that song last night? Yeah, man. Good stuff. It almost made me want to be a soldier. So, um, what's the song about? Mm -hmm. It's about the love of God. Hey, do you know the guy that wrote that song? Dick Whiting? Yeah, you know he wrote those other two songs the other year? And he got paid 28 grand for it. 28,000 bucks? I should write a song. Um, so, Papa, uh, why are you writing the song? <laughs> well, I've been thinking about the love of God ever since Sunday. I want to describe God's love toward us. Have a good evening, Mr. Lamy. All right, then. We'll see you, fellas. See you, Keith. So, Papa, did you finish the song? No. 
having trouble with the third verse. I like the first two, but the third, hmm. The reason I call Wait, this meeting... Aren't you going to pray? Yes, I think we should pray. If you want, I can pray this time. All right, I guess that will be okay. I'll pray in front of the lead. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and caring for us. Please bless our family and be with Walter in the war. Please help us find a way to help our family. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the reason I called this meeting is because Papa started writing a song. They can't figure out the third verse. We need help write a third verse. Why? What does this have to do with helping the family saving the house? Yeah, we want to earn money, not write songs. People who write songs get paid thousands of dollars. If we can finish this song and send it to a publishing house, we could be rich. Thousands of dollars? Yeah, this one guy who wrote two songs, he got paid $28,000. I'm telling you, this is the best way we can help. All we have to do is write a third verse. What's the song about? Um, it's about the love of God. This will be easy. Well, aren't you going to write something? God loves the entire world. By his hand, lightning is hurled. <laughs> that doesn't sound very loving. Fern, why don't you just tell me to write something? Why can't we just write a verse? It's, it's just words. Maybe, maybe we don't know enough about God. Or love to write a song about it. Maybe we need to ask someone who knows more about love. Love? Love is a, is a strong feeling you get for someone in your heart. Love is a feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Do it to me. Do it to me. Feels good, <laughs> doesn't it? Love's sort of like that. It's a good feeling. You mean the feeling when Papa hugs me? Yes, it's like that. To love is to feel. The love of God is like a heart and you should feel it when you part that doesn't even make sense it is too when you love someone you should feel it when you part maybe eva's forgetting something since she's thinking about james so much to love someone you have to know them oh look fern here's your treasure chest can i open it it's locked, and I can't find the key. Oh, Fern, I found the key. It's over here on the vanity. Actually, Fern, do you know what's in the box? It's the most lovely Wait, set of... Wait, don't tell me. How about you, Blynn? Do you know what's in the box? No. Fern knows what's in the box. She thinks it's a treasure. Love is a lot like that. You have to know someone before you can love them. Here's the key, Fern. Why don't you let Blynn know what's in the box so that he can love it, too? Oh, those are beautiful. Let me see. To love is to know. So instead of a heart, it's more like knowledge. Knowledge is the key that unlocks you and me. You can know and love each other. God's love is like a key. And he pokes it into you and me. <laughs> okay. We have to write something we can send to a publishing house. Love. When Tony Phillips Van Leeuwenhoek said, looking at things through a microscope demonstrates the glory of God, he was right. This is amazing. Anthony Phillips Van Leeuwenhoek. Oh, he's 
father of microscopy. Did you just ask me a question just then? Oh, yes, love. In order to love something, you have to understand it. Like this microscope. It helps me to see things I never imagined. For instance, this feather is very pretty. But when I look at it under the microscope, see all the tiny little barbs holding each little strand together, then it becomes truly amazing. Let's review the facts. Eva said to love is to feel. If this is the right one, how can we feel God? But Pauline said love is to know. If she's right, then knowing God would mean loving him. Theodore said. But Theodore said to love is to understand. Everybody said something different, and they all seemed right when they were saying them. So which one is it? Feel, know, understand. And once we know which one it is, how do we write it down? I thought this would be easier. Maybe we should write it down later. That's a good idea. This meeting is dismissed. Fern? Yes? Do you love God? Yes, I do. I mean, do you really love him? You're blind. What has God ever done for you? I thought I loved him, but I don't feel him or know him or understand him. How do you love God? I just love him. How do we understand someone that we can't see or hear? How do we know he loves us? Maybe you should talk to Papa. He helps me understand God more. I found this card in one of Papa's books last night. It's a beautiful poem. Do you think we can use it for the song? I think it's perfect. Better than anything we could have written. Now all we need is the music and we have a song. Good morning, children. We could ask Claudia to write the music. Claudia! Could you write the music for the song? <laughs> Did Papa really finish that song? No, but Blynn found the perfect verse for it. I'd be happy to help, but there is one problem. What? Well, it wouldn't be right to use the other person's words in the song without their permission. Huh? It's called copyright infringement. Remember that story that Papa told us about the man who was selling the pianos with the other people's music? Oh, yeah. That guy got in a lot of trouble. Sure did. Now what are we supposed to do? We have to get permission to use those words. Is the man's name on the card? No, but there's an address. Where is it? Maybe you could write him a letter. Actually, it's right here in town. We could walk there. Oh, goody, let's go after lunch. Two eleven. Two thirteen. Two fifteen. Donald! Donald! What are you doing here? You should have stayed at home. This is no place for you to be. Oh, you never let me come along. Why should I? You get away, you can't keep up, and you Blin. just, you just. Blend, he's here now, and he can't go home by himself. 
All right, just don't be a, a, a conveyance. Fern, can I see the magnifying glass? Oh, here it is. Can I help you? Um, we're looking for the person who wrote the card. Um... We have visitors. <laughs> I I'm glad you came. Can we help you? Benito, these children are looking for... Um... Why don't you show Benito? Uh, we're inquiring concerning the author of the card. Uh, the card? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. The card, it has your address on it. We're looking for the person who wrote the words. Did you write this? <laughs> Don't! As I was saying, <laughs> sir. No, I did not write this, but I have seen it before. You've seen it before? Verdad, that I have. Would you children like to see something? It's about this card. I can show you where the words come from. Oh, um, yes, sir. We'd like to see it. Follow me. I will show you something special. <laughs> Go on. He'll show you. Go on. It's all right. Come. Come, come. Go right here. Watch your step. Well, that verse on that card has a most interesting story. And it all happened right here. Is it a prison? A prison? No, no. It looks like one, but no. Um, strange peoples live here. Local crazy peoples. <laughs> uh, mostly upstairs now, but uh, uh, a long time ago down here. Uh, and, and here we are, here. What is this? This is the place where the words on the card come from. The card comes from in there? See, si, yes, as I say. Years ago, mi abuelo Lupe was working here. <coughs> um, sir, there's something written on the wall. Excuse me, son? something on the wall. Uh, Lupe thought you should see it before we whitewash it. Senor, see what is written on the wall? This is interesting. <coughs> and that is how the words on the wall got written on the card. Do you think the Let dead man wrote this first? Card. Uh, 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 I want to see it. Donald! Donald! This is why you should have stayed at home. You're always in the way and you ruin everything. I just wanted to see it. How am I supposed to find the author for something I can't even read? What happened? Donald tore the card and dropped it in a puddle. Now it's ruined. I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose. If we hadn't grabbed it back, then it would not have torn. Donald tore it! I just wanted to see it. Can I have the magnifying glass, please? I thought you still had it. Oh, no. What now? I forgot the magnifying glass at that place. You did what? He forgot the magnifying glass, so we have to go back and get it. Nothing but trouble. Back again? Yes, we think Donald left our magnifying glass here earlier today. As a matter of fact, he did. Benito has it. I ruined Gwen's card. Really? Yes, the card with the verse on it. Now it is torn and has water on it. Was it a card like this one? Gwen, is this card like yours? 
Where'd you get this? I have a lot of those cards. We hand them out to people. You can keep that one if you like. This card has more things on it. Is that the man's name? It sure is. He wrote it. Did he live here? No, he didn't live here. I think the man who wrote on the wall was copying from this man. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. 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 Donald, I'm sorry I was angry at you. It was my fault, too, that the car got ruined. I should not have said those things. That's all right. Thanks, Donald. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Blynn. Did you see those soldiers? Yeah, my brother Walter has a uniform. You don't have a brother, Walter. Yes, I do. You just never saw him, because he was in Chicago. He came to visit us, but now he's in France. You're just saying that because you like soldiers in uniforms. Hello, young man. What can I get you tonight? Um, Pauline sent me over to pick up pick up some um sausages. Sausages? Oh, right. Virginia? Yes, sir. Would you please give this to Master Layman? They're all paid for. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. He is a real soldier. With a uniform, I'm sure. Doing? I was just over at the church. You were at the church? Yes. What were you doing at the church? I'd like to pray for Walter. You were praying? Yes. At the church? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, and blessed Redeemer of our souls, I beseech thee in thy beneficent kindness. I don't think I'm doing it right. Dear Blynn, I'm over here in France now. So far, we've mostly been marching from one place to another. <laughs> it looks like they're uh, trying to see how long our American shoe leather can last. The food over here is good by turns. There is something I've been thinking about. You know Mama Ellie at the boarding house? Benny isn't there to run errands for her anymore. Do you think you could do that? Mama Ellie! Why not? She's just, she's just, she's just crazy. She's just an old lady. She's nice, just different. She has a black cat. What else did Walter write? Another thing. If you could take Mr. Whitner's letters to the post office for him, that would be a great help. What is he thinking? These people at the boarding house are crazy. I don't want to go over there. Will that be enough, Pauline? Can you buy groceries with that? I think so. Remember the cakes that we promised to make for the church dinner? Yes, I'm remembering. I think I have enough. So, Papa, do we have enough for the rent this time? 
Yes, yes, we have enough. Good. That was rather too close. Oh, we'll be fine. Don't worry. Mama, can you go over this list with me? I would love to help. word. Do you have to read it right now? See, it's this word. Badger's now move. Thanks. The rabbit hopped to the badger's house to... Len, what's this word? Do you really have to? Please. How am I supposed to do a good job when you keep getting in my way? See, it's this word. The one with the Q in it. Inquire. The rabbit hopped to the badger's house to... What did he say? He said inquire. The rabbit hopped to the badger's house to inquire about the badger's trip to the sea. Did you see Mama's face? I think she's wor... And I've been forced to take a significant pay cut. You know why they've moved in over there? They've lost all their money. They've lost all their money. They've lost and all you'll their end money. up at the boarding house. Boarding house. Boarding house. We must all do our part. Do our. It's hard not to worry. Badgers don't go to the ocean. Well, this book said this one did. Someone just made it up. Did not. You don't even know what a badger is. Do too. Fern. We gotta figure out who wrote the verse so we can finish that song. How do we figure out about people in history? Excuse me, ma'am, where are the Henty books? Henty? Those are over on the second shelf. Um, oh, hello, ma'am. We're looking for this man. I think these books over here have the information um, you're looking ma for. Ma'am, thank you. Bring it to the desk. Isn't she going to help us? Um, no, it's easy. All we have to do is find a book that mentions them. For. Oh, hi, Virginia. I'm doing some research on this man. What do you want to know about him for? He wrote that verse, and we want to use it for a song. So, how can I help? Hmm. 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 Here it is. What? That name, look. Rabbi Mir, Rabbi Matthias. They're not quite the same. What's the name of this book? A History of the Jewish People. This whole page is about Jewish rabbis. Is that a name? What's a rabbi? Rabbi, a Hebrew word meaning my master or my teacher. In Judaism, a person who acts as a spiritual leader or a religious teacher of a Jewish community or congregation. A Jewish rabbi. Hmm. So that's what I've been working on. What do you think? I think it's lovely. I like it, but 
I can't find anything about him except he was a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish rabbi? I know a Jewish rabbi. My Hebrew class went to his synagogue last week. He's quite the character. What's his name, um, Rabbi Meir? Here, here's his name. Rabbi Meir ben Isaac Nohorai? No, his name is Rabbi Lazer. Do you think he would know this rabbi? He might. Could you ask him? Actually, I could take you to the synagogue if you wanted to. To a real synagogue with a real Jewish rabbi? When? Not this week anymore, but one day next week. Dear Heavenly Father, great are thy um, tender mercies. All I want is to feel you, to know you, to understand you, but I don't know how. Why don't you just do something? Mom. Mom. Not here. Mom. He was a wild one, that boy. One time when I was whitewashing the fence, he got into it. <laughs> hey, Blynn, need he something? Hello, ma'am. Fern, can you come? Sure, Blynn. Thank you for the stories, Mr. Whitner. See you later, Mama Ellie. Thank you, Fern. What were you doing with those people? But they're nice people. Nice people? They're... Hello, ma'am. Are you Mrs. Hubbard? Ma'am, I have a telegram for you. Did you have someone in the war? That's what I was afraid of. He's dead. Got killed over there and they sent that telegram to tell her. I already delivered a bunch of them. God's like? I think he's like Papa. I always thought he was more like a big ball of light. Everybody keeps talking about how great he is, and I want to know him myself. Can you see the sun? Or if you just look straight at it, can you see anything at all? No, I can't but I can feel it. I can see the sun and feel it, and I can see Papa and feel him, but with God, it's just... I can't see any of these things, but I know they're there. Come in, come in. How have you been, James? Excellent, sir. This young man has a question for you. We're looking for Mir Ben Isaac Nahori. Um, we think he's Jewish. Uh, have you heard him? You must be referring to Rabbi Mir Bar Isaac Nahori, the man who wrote the great Akdamut. Akdamut, what? Akdamut. It is one of the piyut that we sing at the festival of Shavuot. The Shavuot. That's the same festival as uh... Pentecost. Yes, or the Feast of Weeks. Um, it comes 50 days after Passover, in celebration of when Moshe brought the Torah down from Mount Sinai. Blynn, do you remember when Moses went up on the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Well, every year, 
the Jews have a day where they celebrate that with a festival. Yes, and every year before we recite the um, Ten Commandments, we chant a special poem. Ak demut milin vesharajut shuta avla shakelena harman urshuta. What you hold in your hands is the English translation of the poem written by Rabbi Mayir Baritzat Nohorai. Look here. This is the Akdamut. It's written in Aramaic. It looks like a code. It is a code. The Jews often left secret messages in their songs and poems. If I take the first letter of each line, it will form a secret message. Hmm. Yes. Bet. Hmm. Gimel. Ahav. Ahav. Zion. Yeah. Yes. Echet. Tet. Yod. There we go. It still looks like a code. Well, now I have to translate it into English. The first two lines are just simply the alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gemel, Delat, He, Vav, Zion. Or in English, A, B, C, and so forth. The second half of the poem forms the message. My ear, son of Rabbi Isaac, may he grow in Torah and in good deeds. Amen. Be strong and have courage. He wrote a message to himself? I suppose you could look at it that way. He loved God, and this was a constant reminder of that commitment. Wow. Here's another secret about the Akhtamut. Look very closely at the end of each line. Tav, Aleph, Tav, Aleph. The two last symbols are the same. I think he will make a good detective. Those are the letters Tav and Aleph, the end and beginning of the Hebrew alphabet. And that is to remind us that when we are done reading the Torah, we go back to the beginning and read it again. So, the poem on the card is part of the octomet that he wrote? Does he live in Pasadena? Pasadena? I'm afraid not. He lived in Germany. Papa was born in Germany. Papa came to America when he was a boy. Ah, I see. Well, Rabbi Meir was born long before your papa. He lived a long time ago in Worms, Germany, during the time of the First Crusades. Wait, I'm Rabbi, why did you write new things in Aramaic? No one speaks Aramaic anymore. Aramaic is a beautiful tongue. It should be remembered. And it will protect it from the Christians, lest they destroy it for spite. You do not want them to read it? When the Christians learn to love, they will be able to read it. No, 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 you must use a new quill when you write his name. You cannot use the old one. But why must I use a new one? What? You are asking why you must use a new quill? I'll tell you why. Do you know what name that is? Do you know whose name you are writing? He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He preserved the lives of Jacob and his sons by bringing them into Egypt and then bringing them out again. He gave us manna in the wilderness. How can I tell you of the loving mercies of... Even King David could not explain the loving mercies of God. I will not tell you. I will show you. Come. Come! How wide is the sky? His loving kindness is wider. How beautiful are the trees? 
His mercy is more beautiful. This tree is a miracle. It grew from the tiniest seed. His love is a bigger miracle. And you ask why you must use a new quill to write his name? Tell you why. Rabbi, they're coming. Who is coming? The Crusaders. They're coming to kill. Quickly, into the room. Back inside. <laughs> These are my most precious writings. They are my life's work. I do not want them to fall into the wrong hands. Take them to Bishop Adelbert. Plead with him to stop this madness. He is a good man. Surely he will protect you. Quickly now to the castle of Bishop Adelbert. Watch out for the younger boys. Haste! Rabbi Meir? God go with you. After the Octomet was written, 800 Jews were massacred there in Worms. And somehow God protected the Octomet. It was translated into English, and we... What's happening?
Papa. Love is to feel. To love is to know. To love is to understand. To you know and understand. Who are you trying to love? God. To love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. I can't see him. I can't feel him. I can't talk to him. How? God feels our pain. His son died for us. To love someone is to know them personally. It doesn't hurt if you don't know the person. But because we you, Walter. And God, God wants to know us that way. Do you think Mama Ellie feels the same way about Penny? And God understands. He, his son, died too. And he wants us to understand. That's just it. I don't understand. Walter loved God, but God let him die. Papa? Yes, Cupcake. Are you looking for something? Eva, Pauline, and Theodore gave us things to help us understand love, but I can't find them. It was a cloth heart, a key on a string, and a magnifying glass. Can you see them? I have them here, actually. Blynn had them. Blynn had them? Yes. We need to pray for him. Yes, he does. But believing in God is the first part of the journey. Lynn is in a hard part of the journey right now. We all are. Oh, Papa, I miss Walter. Over here. Lynn, didn't... Didn't Walter ask you to help Mama Ellie? Are you going to her? And what about those things to the post office? Lynn, are you going? No. Why not? I'm just not going, okay? But Walter, he asked you. I'm not going to. Please stop bothering me. Thank you so much. Well, you've seized the spoils of the city. You can't carry them all back home? Well, I didn't think I was going to have so much. But they had a special, and then I couldn't carry it all. 
Well, I'm glad for the assistance. Did you find anything about the author of that verse? No. He was in the family room. Thanks. Guess you know who I came to see. Hmm. My leg hurts. Mm-hmm. Your leg has been broken. Yes, sir. Can you move your wrist? Yes. How about now? It's fine. How about this? Does this hurt? Yes. All right. Who wants to help me take Fern's meal to her? Me, I will help. Me too. Here, Donald, why don't you take these cakes out to the kitchen and I'll let you create a stitch. Well, Mom, can you go get Fern's cup so that we can bring in fresh water? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ladies. That was delicious. Mama, do you have a bit of ribbon I can use here? Mm, yes, in my sewing basket. Where's Flynn? I love you. But it's all my fault. Fern asked me to go with her, but I didn't because I was angry at God. Son, I love you. But it's all my fault. I forgive you. But I don't think I love God anymore because what evil would happen to Walter? <laughs> Do you want to love him? Yeah, but I don't know how. It's hard because we can't know or see God the way we could Walter. But Blynn, there is a way. Do you know the scripture verse that Donald and Wilma were memorizing? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength? Yes. And you remember the heart, the key, the magnifying glass? They represent the heart, the soul, and the mind. 
I want to give you the part about strength. You see, to love with all of your strength means to act on your love. Jesus demonstrated this when he died on the cross. He intentionally chose to do something very difficult to show his love toward us. In return, we can intentionally choose to do things to show our love toward God. Even when I don't feel anything? Yes, even when you don't feel anything. Feelings follow actions. At first, you may not feel any love for God, but if you obey his commands, feelings will often follow. Jesus said whatever we did for other people, we were doing for him. So take the first step. Show your love to God by doing something that requires action on your part. In order to know someone, you must take action by spending time talking with them. Prayer is like that. You get to know God by talking with him. You don't have to use fancy words. It is a conversation. I like to walk in the woods to pray. It helps me talk with God as a person instead of just reciting prayers. To understand God, we must take action by reading his word, Yay. serving others, Praying and reading the Bible are all part of loving God with all of our strength. There are so many aspects to the love of God. That is what I was trying to convey in this song I was writing. Oh, did you ever find a third verse? No, I never did. It is very difficult to describe the love of God with words. The love of God is, well, it's indescribable. Oh. I forgot. I found this verse. It was in one of your books, but you were asleep. We tried to find the person that wrote it, but the rabbi said he lived 800 years ago. Do you think we can use it? <laughs> yes, I remember this. This is in the public domain. We can use this. said we could use the verse we found. I sent the whole song and the music to a publishing house. Now all we have to do is wait for them to send it back.
greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty May the love of God heal your every loss. You are dismissed.
us the secret of the prism. The secret of the prism? Oh, the prism has many facets, or sides, just like love. Each side is different, but it's all love. To feel, to know, to understand, to act. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength? That's right. God's love for us has many facets. He is greater than we can imagine. He truly is indescribable. In the end, Fern was right. Papa was the one that helped me understand how to love God. That was the golden summer of my childhood. The journey that I embarked on continues to this day as I discover more exciting facets of the love of God. My childhood friend, Virginia, has become the love of my life. Together, we have come to understand that we can choose to love God even when life is hard because there is no end to God's love for us. Is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave. Shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall when men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call. God's love so sure shall. a 
scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky 